This is Tom Mullen for Communities at Washington Times, and today I'm joined by Ben Swan. Uh, ben has spent 14 years working as a journalist in broadcast news. He's won two Emmy Awards and two Edward R. Murrow Awards. Most recently, Ben was an anchor at Fox News affiliate Fox 19 in Cincinnati, Ohio, where he developed a national audience for his fact-checking series, Reality Check. Ben is now producing a new independent project called Truth and Media, which launches Friday, July 26th. Ben, thanks very much for speaking with me today. Tom, thanks for uh, having me on. Now, your huge national following, most of those people discovered you during your work at Fox 19 in Cincinnati. What led to your decision to leave when you were having so much success there, and what is the new project all about? Well, that's, that's a great question because uh, a lot of folks, I think, would, would hesitate to walk away when things are going so well. But my view is simply this, that we've seen a lot of success so far, and largely in the idea that um, a lot of people believe they're not getting good national news uh, from national networks and from media. Uh, and when I say good, I mean they're not receiving truthful information, that that media is caught in a left-right paradigm, and that's where all of the focus is right now, and that there are issues that go far beyond a left versus right issue, and so they're not being discussed. And, and the uh, attention that we've had, the, the support that we've had so far, uh, this huge following that we've developed, not just here in the United States, by the way, but globally, people watching in 140 countries – uh, we realize that there is a lot more that needs to be said. And so this Truth in Media project is an attempt to re- continue to cover those kinds of stories and to cut through that left-right paradigm and to get it to a larger audience through streaming sites, uh, Hulu, Amazon Prime, eventually having a body of work that we're hoping to put on Netflix, uh, and then continuing to work with um, alternative media and even local TV stations to get that content out to a larger audience. And you call it the Truth in Media Project, and I think most people assume that with fact checkers and the risk of being sued if you put out information that's not true, that most of what they're hearing is basically true. Why do we need something like this, and why don't the major networks want to do something that seems to have such a large following? Well, I think when you, when you say that um, most people would assume that what's being said is true, I think there is a growing feeling that that's not necessarily the case. Pew Research just put out a brand new poll showing that only 28% of Americans believe that journalists provide any real service to American society. That is a staggeringly low number of people uh, who believe in what journalists are doing. I think the reason for that is because uh, most people have decided that journalists are not truly uh, seeking truth, that they are the arms of or you know, propaganda arms of political parties and special interest groups. And so they're not going to talk about issues from a truthful perspective. They're going to do it from whatever position in that left-right paradigm they happen to come from. And so I think what we're seeing today is a huge erosion, especially generationally among people saying, I don't trust what news media says. I feel like media tells us only what they want us to hear. Um, and, and they're not covering uh, very important issues. So when we talk about things like uh, the value of the U.S. dollar, when we talk about the role of the Federal Reserve Bank, when we talk about uh, drone strikes, when we talk about what's happening in Syria right now, um, American foreign policy, uh, there is a huge gap, growing gap between where many Americans have been and where they are right now. And I see people starting to really turn away from networks, believing that networks are not digging into those facts. And why for the average American, the average American family, work a day, raise their kids, why do you think it's so important that we do have accurate news reporting and an objective look at what's really happening on the political landscape? Well, I think it's entirely important because folks who do go out, as you said, and they have their job and they work a day and they they, um, spend time with their family, they're trying to raise their kids, they're hoping for a, a strong future. There are millions upon tens of millions of Americans who are looking around right now at their life and saying, what is happening to our country? Why is it that it's so much more difficult today to go out and earn that living? And why is it that we're we're struggling to keep so much of our income or the value of what we're uh, working for seems to be disappearing right before our eyes? I think many people who um, maybe even wouldn't consider themselves to be very politically minded are beginning to really scratch their heads. And what they're starting to step away from is the idea that it's all the other political parties' fault. That's 
been the narrative for a very long time in this country. Republicans say it's all the Democrats' fault. Democrats say it's all the Republicans' fault. And yet nobody seems to be improving anything. And I think where media has dropped the ball and journalists have dropped the ball is that we have an obligation to say, look, this isn't really about one party over the other. It's about policies that both parties are responsible for. Um, it's about 13,000 lobbyists working in Washington, D.C. It's about uh, lobbying being a $3.3 billion industry and the fact there's no one, for the most part, who's really advocating on behalf of the American people. Special interests are controlling so much of the process. And uh, as journalists, I think we need to do much more to expose that and to stand with the people and for the people as opposed to uh, wanting to have access and therefore you know, ignoring a lot of the, the major issues that have become problems for those families who were just trying to, to take care of their family and, and uh, create a future for themselves. How do you see the political landscape if the American public was better informed? What would be different? Well, I think one thing that would be different is that the American people would have a much clearer idea of who was actually benefiting from their lack of freedom and who is benefiting from so many of our constitutional rights disappearing on a regular basis. You know, one of the issues that we have with this left-right paradigm is that um, media on the right defends certain constitutional rights and liberties, and media on the left defends certain constitutional rights and liberties, and they defend different liberties and then attack other liberties. And so I think for the most part, if, if Americans were more informed and could see through that, they, what they would see is that their voice is disappearing that the voice of the individual in this country is all but gone. And yet the foundation of the country is really based on the idea that the individual is sovereign and that individual liberty is even more important than the greater good concept. And that's something that I think a lot of people might struggle with because we live in a culture today that says that's not true, that says however the greater population feels about something, and not even necessarily what the facts are here, but how they feel about something trumps everything else. And so we spend a lot of time in media trying to control how people feel as opposed to presenting them um, information that's truthful. And I think if we spent more time talking about truthful information, a lot of what we see in society today would shift. I think responsibility uh, and accountability for lawmakers would change. I think the demand for corporations and lobbyists to get out of Washington and stop affecting uh, legislation would change. I think the fact that we have enormous, powerful bills that are being written and passed as laws in Washington, um, but are not written by lawmakers. They're written by lobbyists. Lawmakers don't even bother to read them and then pass them. And they have enormous ramifications, not just for Americans today, but for future generations of Americans. I think if people could see that, uh, they would demand more accountability. And ultimately, I think a lot of people who right now are working in Washington and, and uh, serving there in office wouldn't be there very long. And do you think we might see a viable third or even a fourth party as a result of uh, Americans being better informed? I think that we would not necessarily see a viable third party. Uh, that's bec because the system is so rigged. I think if people were better informed about the system and how it's rigged, then yes, I think that absolutely could happen. But But the American political system, and most Americans, I think, are so in the dark on this, um, has been set up to become a two-party system and to prevent anyone else from becoming involved in it. I think if you go back to 2012 of last year, and I'm not saying he would have been president, but if you had inserted Gary Johnson as the libertarian candidate into the debates between President Obama and Governor Mitt Romney, you would have seen a dramatic shift in the way the outcome of the election would have looked, not necessarily changing the outcome, but certainly changing the demographics and how people voted and where people voted in certain states. Most Americans don't realize they have more than two options in a presidential election. And in fact, I had a, when I was talk, covering this uh, while working for Fox 19, I had a couple of different teachers who contacted me who teach uh, political science and they, and they teach um, um, about election law and American history and just different subjects who were writing to me saying, I didn't realize there were, there were more than two candidates running for president. Until you're talking about this in your newscast, all these different parties that are referred to as alternative or minor parties. So I think if we educated the American public as to just the fact that there are a vast number of other ideas out there, uh, it would shift the political landscape, certainly.
Your uh, website, benswan.com, says that the, the new project launches next week, July 26th on Friday. Is that correct? That's correct. On Friday, we're going to do a live stream event from New Hampshire. Uh, we have several people who will be guests there. Um, the president of the Free State Project, which is based out of New Hampshire, will be speaking. Uh, journalist Amber Lyon uh, will be doing a, a message for us, as well as Judge Jim Gray, who ran as the vice presidential candidate uh, for uh, Governor Johnson. And what we want to do is we're going to have some other speakers as well, by the way. We'll be announcing those. But what we want to do is launch the project and share with people what this crowdsourced effort so far has looked like. Uh, And we want to lay out for them our vision, not just uh, for this particular project, but the larger vision. And there is a larger vision here. And in part, what we're going to explain to people is our three-level platform, which is to inform people to engage them, and then to activate them. We really want to restore power to the individual and to people and get it out of the hands of uh, lawmakers on a, on a national level and even on local levels, help people to, to shift the, the outcome of decisions that are made on local levels because those have as much, if not more, of an effect on their daily lives than do decisions made in, on the federal level. And without spoiling too much of of the launch and the surprise, what is the the channel going to look like? Is it going to be a web stream? Is it going to be 24-7? What are some of the details about the project itself? Well, in the beginning, uh, what we're starting with is a launch of five-minute digital cinema episodes of a show called Ben Swan Full Disclosure, which we plan to place on streaming sites like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. Um, and we also want to get that content out on a, on a local level to local stations so that we can disperse it around the country as much as possible. We want to begin with that project. So that's the first step because we want, what we want to do is create a body of work to begin with. But yes, uh, one thing we will lay out for people is a plan to eventually launch a uh, streaming news network on the Internet that we believe um, will not only take advantage of where all the emerging technologies are headed, but even beyond that, uh, working to – Uh, really kind of reshape the way so many Americans think, not because we want to control how they think, but rather we put ideas in their minds that maybe they haven't had before. Uh, And these aren't our ideas. These are ideas that come go back to the founders and the framers of this country. And many people uh, throughout the nation who for a long time have discussed ideas that today are, are all but gone. I had a great conversation with someone today about Austrian economics and the fact that even most journalists in this country really don't understand any other economic theory other than Keynesian, and they probably wouldn't call it Keynesian. They would just say this is basic economics. I think uh, there there are a lot of great ideas out there that people aren't being exposed to that this project will work to expose them to. Yeah, I know when I took economics in the 80s during the Reagan years in college, Keynesianism was taught to me as the only economics, so you're (laughs) definitely right there. You know, Ben, a lot of the things you say would lead one to believe that there's a libertarian bent to to the program. But I I did watch your preview of the Truth and Media launch, and you say that there's some things there for not only the Tea Party crowd, libertarians, but also the Occupy Wall Street crowd, that there's going to be aspects of your message that appeal to, to even those groups. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, because what we see in the Tea Party movement and within the Occupy movement is a great deal of what I would call justified anger at what is happening in Washington. And so the Occupy movement, though it was really uh, billed as being um, an anarchist movement at times, um, really had kind of a bad reputation, certainly uh, in that left-right paradigm. Uh, And the Tea Party movement has been given a a kind of a bad connotation in the left-right paradigm, depending on which side you're on. But we believe there's justified anger on both sides of uh, those issues and, and within those groups. And it's, and it's anger that has not been given, I think, an appropriate place in media. The media spends a lot of time talking about um, if there's a problem, if there's a, a, a fight breaks out, somebody throws a trash can. And so that's where all the focus goes, rather than saying, well, what is it that these folks actually you know, were justifiably angry about? And then again, part of our platform is to provide people with answers, not violent answers, because that doesn't solve anything. But there is a process by which solutions come in this country, and we want to encourage people to use those those avenues. Um, So we're going to appeal to those groups, I think. Uh, The main thing we want to do, though, is not necessarily – a lot of people assume that we are, as I said, uh, as you said, libertarian-based. We're not necessarily libertarian-based. What we are seeking, though, is truth, and I believe that if you seek truth, ultimately it leads you back to – a message of individual liberty, uh, because again, that is where our constitutional foundation is rooted. I didn't decide that. I didn't decide that the oath of office would be uh, a president 
vowing and taking this oath to uphold and protect the Constitution, military members, police officers, members of Congress, judges. I didn't decide that. But because that is rule of law in this country, uh, then I think as a journalist that we have to work to uphold that. And so there is certainly – we have a strong libertarian following, a strong liberty movement following. Uh, we have a strong Tea Party following. But I think it's because a lot of those groups can agree on certain things, and that is that they want limited government, and they want government to be responsive to the people, not dictate to them. And so uh, that's kind of what our message is. We want to make government responsive. We want to make journalism responsive to the people. Right now, for the most part, it's not responsive. Uh, journalists tell you what to think, and they tell you uh, what you should know, rather than stepping back and saying, okay, how can I serve the people to whom I'm providing this information? Again, the, the launch is next Friday, July 26th. For those interested in finding out more information, what's the best website for them to go to right now and start to find out what they might see next and week? They can go to benswan.com. Uh, it's B-E-N-S-W-A-N-N.com. And then there, while you're there, you can check out, we have a, a place on the website you can read about the Truth in Media Project. Um, and you can also go over to, um, on the right side of the screen, a, a place there where you can back the project and help support it. Because in the beginning, as I mentioned, we're doing this as a crowdsourced project. So uh, we have over 4,000 people who have uh, pledged to back the project so far, which is tremendous. The average um, donation is $67. And so we're very excited about what that looks like. And, and I encourage people to go and check it out and look at it for yourselves. Ben, I'd like to thank you for coming on today and speaking with me. And we look forward to the launch of your project. Best of luck with it. Tom, thank you.